Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andrei Robachevsky, ISOC. And uh, today I'll be talking about routing security. And more specifically, is there a possibility to leverage market forces to address some of the challenges that we face in the global routing system? Let me start with a rhetorical question. What is the commonality between a healthy lifestyle and information security management? Well, I think the commonality is that short-term benefits like eating a cake or uh, instead of investing in, in security, deploying a new feature or a new service, they win in the short term. Because in the short term, not eating a cake or not investing in, in information security doesn't make uh, much difference, visible difference, right? We also know people that lived a long life despite unhealthy lifestyle. We also know a lot of companies around us that were never hacked. So our risk assessment is sometimes flawed. And this is even more true when we talk about shared resource, like, you know, global routing system or DNS. So let's talk about routing system. What's the problem? Well, I'm not the one to tell you how routing system works, so apologies for that, but uh, let me use a few slides to set the context. We have almost 60,000 uh, networks, or well, autonomous systems on the net that exchange reachability information around themselves, among themselves. Each of them build their own view of the internet which is influenced also by local policies. And um, yeah, that's how internet works, right? So what's the problem? The biggest problem is the main component of this routing system, the, the BGP, the protocol that is used to exchange this reachability information, is based entirely on trust. That means it doesn't have built-in mechanism to validate the announcements this information we get from our peers. Without out-of-band checks, we, the only thing we can do, we have to believe. And we pass this information along, so if someone lies, this lie propagates and spans continents. And of course, even if we want to validate this out-of-band, there is lack of resource data that doesn't allow us to do this on a global scale. And, well, you're aware of all these incidents, of course. Unfortunately, discussion about security it sort of bumps up when the incident happens and dwindles down when it's over. So what's behind those incidents? Oops. Yeah, what's happening? Um, well, it's IP prefix hijacking when autonomous system announces a prefix that doesn't belong to it, that it shouldn't originate, and this announcement wins using different techniques. And this is, well, many of those incidents are misconfigurations, right? Um, but some of them are malicious. In any case, that often leads to denial of service attacks when traffic is just dropped on the floor, but can be used for impersonating network. And for instance, spammers like this technique. They hijack address space, they do the spamming activity, they um, seriously affect reputation of this address space, and then they disappear. Well, another thing is route leaks, right? And route leaks is essentially a violation of valley free routing. Something like if you announce routes learned from your transit provider to your peer, or if you announce, uh, tr you know, prefixes learned from one transit provider to another transit provider. Again, many of those are misconfigurations, and the network that gets it mi misconfigured is, is the victim itself, because it's, it's a sort of denial of service attack. But when it's done with malice, this is a very effective tool for reconnaissance. You can actually... Uh, deroute traffic for specific networks 
and passively monitor what's happening there, uh, understanding what kind of services, what kind of open uh, entries uh, this network has. And this is passive, it's not active scanning, so we can do this in a very stealthy way. And of course, IP address spoofing. And we know that, well, today, IP address spoofing is not the most and the only and the most effective way of launching a volumetric attack, uh, but still, IP address spoofing is a way to hide your activity. So are there solutions? Well, not solutions, but tools, yes. And those tools exist for decades. I think many of you, I'm sure, are using those tools. But there is a certain lack of deployment. It's not globally deployed, right? And it's also lack of reliable data. Even if you have a tool, you have limited cap capability to validate those announcements because you don't have data. That's what we call a strategy of the commons. In fact, those measures that you deploy, they do not immediately contribute to the security of your network. If you think about the security of your own network, is in the hands of other networks. So the goal here is that other networks contribute to your network security. The more networks contribute to that, the better your security is. And also there is a lack of visible industry-supported line between good and bad, sort of a cultural norm, right? We know best current practices, we know what should be done, but this kind of clarity is, is missing. And that is what, I think I'm pointing in the wrong direction, maybe. Alvaro was doing some gestures, maybe that would help. Oops, yeah. So, well, here I'm going about MANUS. And MANUS stands for Mutually Agreed Norms for Routing Security, right? It's not a solution as well, but this approach that I would like to present to you. And MANUS is about collaboration and shared responsibility. And throughout the presentation, I'll be uh, using the term we. And we is not me. And we is not even internet society. We is referring to this effort, which is really a community uh, effort. Internet society plays a secretarial role here. We're supporting this activity, uh, but we're not running this. Manus defines uh, uh, this kind of baseline norm by defining four actions that network operator has to implement to demonstrate their commitment for routing security. And this is not a best current practice, this is a minimum baseline, right? And it's technology neutral. It doesn't tell you what to do, it actually focuses on the desired outcomes. And also manners builds a visible community of supporters, so you actually see how many hands work on security of your own network. If you look at those actions, you may say that this is a motherhood and apple pie, that we all know about that and have done that. Those actions are actually limited in scope. So if you look at about filtering, it's not just about filtering uh, in general or on a global scale, it's filtering of your customers, something that you should and must do. Well, the same applies for anti-spoofing. In situations where it's safe, not risky, you should apply anti-spoofing measures. And global validation, again, we're not talking let's validate globally, because it's, it's, it's a challenging task. But at least, if you publish information to enable others to validate globally, I think that would be a very important step in the right direction. Right, so this is a note on manners uh, limitations, because sometimes people come to me and say, hey, you promote this manners, but manners is very uh, lethal, I mean, ISPs should do much more. This is, this is only part of the solution. This is a very small step. And indeed it is, because we are talking about new norm from which you should jump higher, right? It's a very minimum baseline. But the idea is the more of us implement this minimum baseline, the more secure the routing system becomes. 
And the thing is that many members of Manus go above and beyond what is written there. But this is a good starting point. Now, what we talk about so, uh, shared responsibility, we talked about collaboration, which are very important concepts, and I'm sure uh, you, you embrace those concepts. But the thing is, if we're not leveraging market forces, we can get only so much traction. So the question is, are there market forces? Can we leverage them that can help us address security issues in the routing system? To do this, we commissioned, we work with a company, 451 Research, analyst company, uh, to sort of survey and understand attitudes and perceptions of different stakeholders vis-a-vis -vis this initiative. They did a quite comprehensive study. So they uh, had interviews uh, with about 30 uh, network operators, and they also surveyed by way of online surveys and interviews 250 enterprises talking about manners, asking questions, and seeing how, what, what they think, what the perceptions are. On this slide, you can see a demographic. So it's, it's enterprises who are from multiple industry sectors, um, quite representative. So what are the results of this study? Well, first of all, enterprises are concerned about security. Interestingly enough, uh, small enterprises have more concerns about security. Maybe because they feel not less comfortable and less confident in this hyper-connected world. Good news that actually their security concerns are very much aligned with the problems Manus is trying to address. So if you look at the slide, you can see uh, traffic hijacking, you can see spoofing, well, you can see other things like, you know, DDoS and availability as well. Enterprises were not aware of Manus, I have to be honest with you. But when Manus was explained to them, they thought, yeah, we think that can be a very effective way, especially in the long run, to address those security issues. Interesting, they were willing to pay. And the, the analysts were surprised by the numbers, by the way, because in this market, it's, it's very strange to have those, you know, 15% uh, premiums. It's very unusual. Well, it's okay. You have to take it with a grain of salt. One thing you answer on survey, another thing you write a check, right? But still, this is an attitude. And also, it doesn't mean that by saying I'm a menace uh, service provider, you can expect 50% um, more uh, payment. But it can help what it says, the slide, that it can help, for instance, in discounting process. When you, um, uh, you know, going through a tender activity, you can differentiate yourself and achieve less discounting for those contracts. Right, and when we go to service providers, we see uh, misalignment. So, well, you see 16% do this for the good of the internet. That's, that's great. And people do this for their own security as well. But there is no mention of customer demands. So service providers essentially do not realize that there might be demand for the security things. And enterprises, their customers, might be interested in the thing like manners. So what did we learn from this study? Well, security is vital to enterprises. And actually, not just security. We, the study was very, very narrow scoped. So it's routing security and those issues that we're trying to address, right? They are willing to pay, well, pay, right? Value manners uh, as, as, as it comes from service providers. They are willing to partner with someone whose goals are aligned with theirs, so goals to solve those security issues. And we also learned that Manus adds or can add value for service providers. First of all, by differentiation. This is a very 
uh, complex market, right? And differentiate yourself is very difficult. Also for your customers to uh, go beyond just, you know, pricing and, and throughput is very difficult. Manners can help you to differentiate. Service providers can build additional services based on Manners actions. For instance, uh, let me give you one example. For instance, if you implement anti-spoofing uh, measures, you can do monitoring and feed this information back to your customers. And customers, security becomes an increasing concern, and this information, security information feeds uh, are valued more and more. So if you have those, if you're building those facilities, and if you even go beyond, you have this ability to value add on just, you know, uh, uh, IP forwarding function. And Manas, it sort of contributes to a more deep and more long-term partnership with your customers, which reduces uh, potential customer churn. So let me summarize why enterprises should require Manas. Well, first of all, um, Manners helps them to communicate their uh, interest and security to their customers. Um, large enterprises, which are networks in themselves, they are welcome to join Manners. And I think implementing Manners actions is a good way either to integrate in the existing uh, security processes or a good starting point for implementing security, information security management processes, a very lightweight. Um, Enterprise can and should probably request manners in, in their RFPs as a way of differentiation. And in regulated industries like finance or some others, manners can be used as additional uh, component for the auditing process to uh, sort of assess security posture of, of an enterprise. There. Right, thank you. Uh, so, and service providers, why should they join? What is the motivation for the service providers to join as it came from that study? Well, Manners apparently is a sign of security proficiency and commitment. It's a sign of security posture. It's not so much, oh, Manners is the protection. It's again, it's an indication. It's also indication that provider is committed to solving those network problems on a global scale. And those problems, as we saw, very much aligned with the desires of enterprises, of your potential customers. Um, manners distinction can add uh, to competitive advantage. And um, as you saw, you may get some, uh, you know, uh, fee increase or discounting reduction if you, uh, if manners becomes uh, more widely known to enterprises, uh, and you can use that. So I talked about, let me go back. So I talked about you know, commercial aspects, which I think from this study uh, gave more ideas how can we get traction in addressing those issues. But back to essentially still community, uh, collaboration and shared responsibility are very important components when we talk about global infrastructure or joint shared resource. So in this respect, joining manners basically means uh, this self-assessment test. So if you can stand up publicly and say, um, I care about routing security. I'm prepared to spend resources on addressing those issues, and I'm prepared to be held accountable by the community. I think you should join. You should consider joining, and you are very much welcome. So please join, consider joining Manus today. Um, so joining is quite simple. It's a very lightweight process. You have to go to the website on that, that, is, that is here, www.manners.org, uh, and fill out the form. And while filling out the form, uh, we appreciate if you explain in as much detail as possible how those Manners actions are implemented in your network. We run simple compliance tests. We can't do everything, but we run simple compliance tests. We look at databases, how data is registered there. We look at your routing history uh, through using tools like BGP Stream and BGP Mon uh, to see if there were suspicious incidents in the past six months. Uh, we also may ask you to run a spoofer test to check if your networks are spoofable or not. 
But if you implement those measures, I mean, there is nothing to worry about, and uh, your input is appreciated. That is not going to be public. The only public information that is released on the MENAS website, if you go uh, to the participants list there, you will see the actions that are implemented are checked. The requirement is to implement majority of those actions. So you can see some of the members implemented only three actions, but majority implemented all four. And of course, get involved in the community. So part of MANUS efforts is to uh, solidify the community of security aware network operators so they can have uh, also some important activities uh, uh, among them or exchange information uh, among this more trusted club that they will be reluctant to do on uh, just open log list, for instance. Uh, and in, in uh, concluding my presentation, a few words about um, other components of this program. So if you don't feel ready or you are not confident uh, whether you implement those actions correctly, uh, we released, and again we, it's a work of the community through the BCO process, uh, right BCO process, um, released a MANAS implementation guide which contains more detailed instructions how those MANAS actions can be implemented. So if you're interested, please go and it's published online. Uh, we are also working on MANAS training to build capacity for those um, who haven't implemented this stuff yet. Uh, so when we start working on the implementation guide, we thought it will be a simple uh, two pages instruction, one, two, three, four, five. It's a 50 pages document and still it doesn't contain many of those instructions. So routing security is hard. We appreciate that. To assist with that, we are working on online modules and following that uh, hands-on lab on how to implement uh, MANUS actions. We are looking for partners. I think RIRs are great partners, so we are discussing this with the RIRs, if this can be somehow integrated in the training that RIRs deliver. So uh, that would scale this activity up. And this is, uh, yeah, my last slide, so if you're interested, please go to this website. Uh, if this resonates with you, if you're with us, want to solve those issues, uh, don't hesitate to fill out the form, send us email. And if you have questions now or later, I'm here, uh, and you can always send us an email. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Andrew. Andrew. Y bueno, eh, tenemos espacio para un par de preguntas. Eh, no sé si alguien quisiera preguntar algo por acá. Eh, yo les sugiero que siempre aprovechen a los expertos que traemos acá y pregúntenle. Es que no tenemos esa oportunidad todos los días. Que, bueno, por ahí está Carlos con la primera pregunta. Uh, Carlos Martínez Lagnik. Andre, if you allow me, I will ask the question in Spanish for the benefit of the audience. Do you have your translator thing? Okay. Oh, Carlos, I expect it's Spanish from you. So. Yeah, exactly. Um. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I, I, I did have it. <laughs> eh, gracias por la presentación, Andre. Está súper interesante. Yo vengo siguiendo el trabajo este desde, desde su inicio. Me gustaría si podés comentar algo sobre, sobre el rol que ves de la en las iniciativas de RPKI y de BGPSEC, del IETF, en, en el tema de seguridad en routing, dado que de hecho en, el, en los RAIRS hemos estado empujando bastante el tema de RPKI. Well, I was working on RPKI myself when, when, when I was working with the RIPE NCC. So, a uh, good question. Now, if you talk about MANAS, MANAS is technology neutral. So we're not suggesting particular technology or particular approach how you achieve those outcomes. If you look at the implementation guide, uh, which is a more detailed guidance, there also we suggest two approaches. One approach is based on the IRRs and another approach is based on RPKIs. In the context of MANUS, what is important is that you uh, enable to filter uh, your customer announcements, right? And in this respect, you can use IRR or you can promote RPKI the same way you use IRR. So you can ask your customers to register ROAS 
uh, in RPKI repository and use it the same way to build your filters or to have you know, immediate feed if you implement latest software of some of the vendors to uh, take advantage of, of that, that stuff. I think both approaches will live for a while, right? What is important now, and this is a similar problem, whether it's IRR or whether it's RPKI, is lack and completeness of data. And Manus, it actually recommends both ways. So you, by doing Manus actions, you also make this data set more complete, both in IRR and both in RPKI. Now, ITF is working further, right? Uh, I think uh, the, the, the BGP SEC standards uh, have been released, almost to be released, so it's, it becomes a standard. But I think it will, some time will pass before we see BGP SEC deployed uh, on a wide scale. But I think data is the most important thing, not technology, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, Jan. Okay, um, Jan George, Internet Society. Um, what I am observing lately in 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 African continent is that uh, they also found a very good use for manners in a, in in a slightly different way. When you do the peering agreement for example, between you and me or whoever, between whoever else, you somehow need to make sure that, that you put in that the other person, the, 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 the other ends of, of your connectivity will behave and uh, uh, apply to certain, to certain standards. And they found manners, principles, quite useful and easy to put in the peering contract and say, if you, if you don't comply and, and abide the, the manners principles, in other words, if you start doing crazy stuff on the other end that will hurt my network, then I will just disconnect you. I will, I will terminate the BGP session. So I, and, this, and this is how, how manners in Africa started to, to spread, because when, when one starts using it, in uh, in uh, um, uh, peering uh, agreements, then then also the other side usually starts using it, and then you know it just amplifies around. Thank you. Thank you for this comment. I think this is not just done for uh, like well, let's just improve routing security. I heard cases where uh, uh, you know in peering. Uh, someone had to filter about 40% of routing announcements, so it's, it's a great burden. And if you have someone who, um, you know, does this routing hygiene, I think that reflects on your operations and makes it simpler, and it actually, you, you, you um, use your resources more efficient. So this is, this is a very important comment. I have also to say that there are only two members in this community that are members of MANA, so uh, we hope that uh, you guys, and I'm sure there are many uh, network providers here who are already compliant with MANUS. So please have a look. Uh, you are very, very much welcome in, in the MANUS membership. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Andrei. Nuevamente, aplauso para él.